this just in. Brad, from the fans out there. That was a fun one. This is from Ashton. He emailed me about this and I was kind of interested to see, so. Ashton. Let's see. Order call. Oh, you know what? This might require me to actually put my hat on straight and go to work here. Okay, I have no idea. All right, it's to Chance and Brad uh, in Denver. It's from uh, Asher, I believe it. A S A T R. Asher, that's right. Okay, Asher, and he's from Colorado, and we, that's as far as we'll go there. Oh, we got something sticking out. Uh, the, the post office must have really liked that. So, let's uh, open it up. I should sharpen my letter opener. <laughs> Ooh, that's sharp enough, okay? And uh, I didn't know what I'm doing here, so I cut my sharpeners in my hand. Uh, we do have a note in here. Okay. And, uh, okay, dear Brad, here is a spoon, okay, that I have flattened, okay, with a vise. Uh, it is quite thick uh, and will probably be difficult to sharpen. I believe that you could be up to the task, okay? This is the... decider, okay, on whether or not I buy uh, one of your sharpeners. Please use the sharp, sharp and spark, okay, the longer one. Uh, and then it says four and one after that combo. Okay, so sharp and spark four and one. So that's actually the smaller one than this. Uh, four and one uh, combo sharpener for this task. Okay, sincerely, Asher. Okay, from Colorado. So let's let's put that down. And uh, we have a spoon. And so what he did is he actually flattened it, flattened it here, flattened it out. Um, you know, it's got just a oop, little kink in it like that. So we're going to make a like a knife blade out of it. And I've, I've got to say, this could take a little while, and I'm going to get it done just as fast as I can. I will use the V, and I'll use the open face. I may even resort to this a little bit. Which one I use really has nothing to do. I could probably do this with the round one if I could get this on something, take the round one, and I just sit here and just rip the metal. Okay, this is what it would look like because I try to practice what I preach. Um, just got so much crap in my pocket. Uh, we got keys. We got pocket knife. We got pocket knife. Okay, right there he is. I've been carrying that one for eight years. If you have a sharpener that's been used a lot, if it's in your pocket for about eight years, I always make sure I have it with me when I go to a show because which one do I actually use for a demo most of the time? My old, my eight-year-old one, okay? And I do that just to prove to people that I keep using it, keep using it, keep using it way more than you'll ever use it, okay? Um, and show you that, yeah, they do still work, okay? So let's uh, put this one right here for right now and not forget it. Okay. And let me go to work on this spoon. And I, I normally would have something that I could put the spoon on so I can really rip at it. So let's start out with the four in one's big brother. Okay. This is called the Sharpen Spark. And it does have the uh, spark in the handle. Okay. So there's a little bit of a coating on it. You scratch the coating off, which that black coating right there. It's called ferrocerium rods. It's a combination of six rare earth metals, magnesium being one of them. That's far as I'm gonna go, because I don't even know what the others are. All right, uh, never really paid any attention to it. So we'll see. Oh yeah, she's got good spark there. And um, when the red touches the black, eh, give it just a little bit more, not too much, but a little bit. Okay, so let's, uh, see if we can grow some sharpened spark uh, uh, tools okay so here I go all right I'm, I'm gonna start ripping away here and I'm putting some pressure on oh, I can see that I'm already changing the shape of that spoon edge quite a bit just like that I'm gonna come back this way this way go right on around I've told people before find me a piece of tin and I'll make a knife out of it. I've never claimed how long other than it wouldn't take me very long. This rounded spoon would be difficult 
to run through, well, maybe it isn't too bad, uh, like this. Oop, it is hard to hang on to. All right, but let's go ahead. Oop, it keeps wanting to pull it out of my hand. All right, hang on for a second. Got to give me a fair chance. Okay, like this. And I can see the ribbons of steel coming off. And I'm going to let it hit my leg a little bit because it's not sharp enough to do anything yet. In a little bit, I'll check it. And I'll see. Now, this wouldn't work with a dang. All right, going like this because it'll bite and you can't make it slide. That's not going to work. So we go back to this, a little kink in the handle. And we just do this. By the way, the new, oops, the new lens that I have on my camera, right now that lens is only, just a little bit ago, that lens is only four inches. All right, that's probably not as fast as doing it this way. Turning it over is going to be hard. Um, I can tell you right now, uh, Asher, whether or not I can get this done very fast has nothing to do with the sharpener. All right, it has to do with trying to hang on to the spoon and uh, tear, cut, rip some metal off of that spoon quick enough. And I can, I can see the shine right here. There's a, a bevel, an edge developing right there. And it's going to be a little while, so I'm not going to stop working. I'm going to just keep working here. Right now, I'm just trying to make the tungsten carbide corner cut the spoon quick enough that I can get this done in under two weeks. Okay, so just like that. And I'll turn it a little bit this way, turn it a little bit that way so I don't set up a really bad chatter on the spoon. And I'm going to have to switch my left hand to another way pretty soon because I can actually feel my fingers starting to cramp up a little bit. So we do this. Okay, we knock some of the little flakes off. All right, so let's turn it back this way now. Right now I'm cutting, coming back towards my hand. Just let it bump into my finger right there. And I'm trying to keep moving quick enough that this doesn't take too long to make a spoon slice paper, or at least cut the paper. Just like that. Come back this way. My left index finger is probably going to be sore when I get done with this. And I'm just trying to hurry. You know, if I had a, uh, a bench, a little bit different way to hold my sharpener and do this to it, it would work faster. And it is slightly hard to hang on to the sharpener and do what I need to do. It's actually starting to, to bite and take some of the fingernail off. This side will not. It's like a butter knife, you know. All right, so let's get busy. Go back to ripping metal. It's just kind of hard to hang on to. Tungsten carbide, it's like an insert to a mill or a lathe. They're made to cut steel, but a mill or a lathe has the rigidity of a piece of work that is clamped down solid and the tool holder is solid. And when you move the tool holder and the insert at the intended victim, <laughs> it cuts the metal and it does a better job of it than what I can do because it's flexible, kind of not cooperating. All right, let's kind of hurry up here because I'm a little bit worried about running out of battery or video uh, gigabytes in my phone. All right, now let's go out here. And I don't know, hold still, you can see, I think you can see the little metal filings. That, that's a good one right there. Okay, and let's see, it's it's getting there. I knew it would, I mean, I'm not surprised, it just takes a little bit of time. Tungsten carbide being way harder than that spoon with an absolute 90 degree corner. There's absolutely no question 
that you can cut that spoon down and make a knife out of it. And of course you got to cut it down even more to make it thinner so it really slices paper because it is thick. this way what I'm doing right now is I'm just using the 90 degree corner on the spoon edge and I'm actually trying to just see how it grabs and sticks and, and, and jumps like that okay there's no question that that thing will bite and cut so just like this now I'm going out this way go right on around and Asher, if my left hand is retarded for a month after I do this, it's your fault. <laughs> Just like that. Go right on around. Alright, I'm going to do a little fine tuning on the cutting edge. And let's just see what happens here. Light. I can still see the edge. I almost said cutting edge. It's a spoon. <laughs> um, but if you take a quick look here. Okay. So let's just do a quick pre-test here. gosh <laughs> all right let's keep going I really did not expect that to cut the paper I, I really didn't um, I'm gonna hold still look at the look at the side that's not been touched that's a good uh, probably 332nd of an inch wide pushing a 16th of an inch this side is getting down to where it's actually difficult to see the cutting edge so it's getting pretty thin uh, out here I'd have to work on that more. Right now I'm just trying to strive to say from there to there between my fingernails. I'm going to try to make that really sharp. And of course if you're going to use it to skin deer and things like that you have to work. Actually that would probably work really good for skinning deer. Alright and then I'll straighten your handle back out. Alright so run around here like this. Right now I'm trying to start here and finish back here in one pass. Now we'll turn it and go back out. This weekend I'll be in Las Vegas. Come up to me in Las Vegas this weekend and say, Brad, you owe me something. I'll shake your hand and say, there, I'm paid. I'll give you round sharpener. Come up to me this weekend in Las Vegas and say, Brad, you owe me a round sharpener, and I'll give you a $10 round sharpener. How's that? And yes, if you got a brother in Las Vegas, you can tell him what you just heard. And uh, if he comes up to me in Las Vegas and uh, tells me, Brad, you owe me a round sharpener, I'll give him one. All right, now let's... No, dude, you're just going to have to get your spoon back. <laughs> the way I send it to you. All right. You know what, if I prove that it, well, you probably want your spoon back. Uh, I'll even sign it for you. All right, let's see how close we are now. That's, that's not there, but at least At least it's starting to get there. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. Let's see what I can accomplish this way. It's just hard to do. The spoon is so slick. It's... hard to hang on to. But you know what the bottom line is this. Give me a piece of tin or something that I can run through there easier. The back of a little saw blade or something. And I'll make a 
knife edge out of it pretty fast if I can actually get a hold of it, hang on to it, and, and do it right. Remember I say at the end, tip at every pass, cut the wire edge off the blade. Don't touch it very hard, it's pretty easy. Now I'm gonna leave the knife up here, get the paper, and the knife, the spoon. I'm trying not to get the spoon out of view of the camera. All right. That's really not too bad. It's actually pretty good. Um, it bites, it gets, oh, it, it, it really does actually get a hold of your skin. All right, just out of fear, we're going to run out of uh, time on my camera here. Um, obviously, if I got this far, I can go further. I don't know. Should we just run it out? I, I don't want to run it out, but um, <laughs> all right, let's uh, just hurry a little bit. Right now I'm flipping the sharpener this way, that way, this way, you know, this way, that way, one way or another, I'm going to get you. You got to make a song like that, one way or another, all right? Good. It just gets better. <laughs> okay, that's far enough to show you. Yes, I can make a knife out of a spoon. I can carve that spoon down. In an emergency situation, I don't have any knives. I just take my sharpened spark or, or the long handle or even the little round one and I put them up there. Let's just hurry up a little bit here. Uh, and, and I'll make a knife out of some kind of a piece of metal Okay, maybe a tuna fish can lid, I sharpen it, all right? Um, there's all kinds of things that I can use um, to make a, a knife out of. So the little round one is actually easier to use, just like this. Okay, and I'm gonna come back this way. I'm sharpening going towards my fingers. I lift it up a little bit. Now I'm sharpening going towards the, the point, uh, the end of the spoon there, just like that, just like this. And you know what, I travel a lot and it just so happens that I run into some Brits and actually these, actually these weren't Brits, these were Aussies. And I was sitting there eating dinner with them and don't get too mad at me guys, but I'm, it's like, okay, what are wrong with you people? They we're sitting there, there's their food, there's the food on the plate. They take the fork right side up you know and you eat your food they take the fork put it in their left hand turn it over now the tang tongs or tangs whatever on the fork are pointed down they push it into the food take their knife push the food up on the back of the fork hold the fork flat and try to put it in their mouth and i'm sitting there watching this family of three and, and i'm just shaking my head thinking my God, in 2019, they haven't even figured out how to use a fork, you know? So, just comical. <laughs> and you know what, if you're from Australia or Britain or something like that, <laughs> and you use a fork completely backwards, <laughs> God bless you. That's probably the whole reason for Brexit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, probably the whole reason for... Uh, Hand me that piece of paper, cameraman. There you go. My faithful servant down there. Holy cow. Okay. Now it's fun. Now it's fun. And it would just get better.
This is Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. I just examined my sharpeners and what I did, and I give it two thumbs up. This is Brad. Oh, hang on. Asher. Now you gotta buy a Sharpen Spark Mini, buddy. Catch you later.